Hey there, Truster fans. Uh, this week's two big ones are Consensus 2024 and the Bilderberg Club meeting. Uh, both are global importance. Obviously, Consensus, a major crypto gathering, is all over the news. Well, crypto news, for that matter. Uh, something that cannot be said about Bilderberg. If uh, you know what this is, good for you. If not, I'll share all the info I was able to obtain, but this gathering of the global super elites is so secretive that I'm afraid not much information is available. So just stick around, don't go anywhere. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like our content, and let's get to uh, episode 114 of your beloved Trustra Newsreel. Consensus 2024, which took place from May 29th to 31st in Austin, Texas, featured important discussions with the creme de la creme in crypto, blockchain, and Web3. I love the cute names they gave to various venues like uh, Gen C Stage, uh, Money Reimagined Stage, Protocol Village, Startup Village, and so on. Key sessions included discussions on real-world assets tokenization, regulatory compliance, and the future of blockchain, of course. The speakers list is truly remarkable. Check out the, the event's website. As they put it on society pages, everyone who's anyone in crypto was there. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the US presidential candidate, uh, is seeking to position himself as the pro-crypto presidential candidate, telling the audience of consensus that Bitcoin will comprise a fundamental uh, component of his deficit management strategy. <laughs> I have no idea what, what he's talking about. Uh, Kathy Wood, who, as you can remember, lost a shit ton of money for her investors, says that Ether ETF filings were approved because uh, crypto is an election issue and that Bitcoin is unstoppable. I happen to agree. I know Bitcoin's unstoppable. What's stoppable is people who use it and especially liquidity providers and easily stoppable. But that's a whole different story. We're not going to get into that right now. Uh, New York Stock Exchange President Lynn Martin said that the exchange would consider crypto trading if regulatory picture were clear and so on and so forth. I mean, again, there were plenty of discussions. Uh, brand and creator summit sessions explored how brands use Web3 to reach new consumers at the intersection of AI, blockchain, and the creator economy. Creator economy, one of my favorite terms these days. Um, the event also featured a town hall on digital rights, important stuff, panels on uh, decentralized identities and sessions on the evolution of digital assets and tokenization trends. I've mentioned those already. Uh, uh, Coindesk being one of the uh, the event's major like gold sponsors or something has done a great job covering it. I highly recommend their take. Plenty of food for thought there. I'm going to post some links in the description. The 2024 Bilderberg meeting currently taking place. Well, it's actually probably over by now. Uh, it took place in Madrid, Spain, uh, and it marks the 70th anniversary of the, this controversial and highly secretive uh, summit. Uh, it's not exactly summit because presidents, heads of state, rarely show up there. But uh, uh, this year, the conference is intensely focused on the future of warfare, uh, reflecting the current global conflicts in regions like Ukraine, Sudan, and Gaza, of course. Uh, high security measures are in place. Uh, including police drones and heavy police presence, particularly heightened with the uh, Spanish king's attendance. Uh, uh, the agenda includes critical discussions on AI, geopolitical issues involving Russia, China, and the Middle East, as well as uh, economic challenges facing Europe and the US. Notably, there are multiple sessions on AI, artificial intelligence, making it a central topic this year with key figures from the tech industry like the heads of Google DeepMind, Microsoft AI, and other leading AI companies in attendance. Uh, I know Sam Altman was there, so. The meeting also featured prominent participants from various sectors, including political leaders like the King of, Nether uh, King of the Netherlands, NATO officials, and high-level US national security officials. Uh, the presence of defense tech companies and discussions about innovative military technologies underscore the focus on the militarization of AI and its applications in ongoing conflicts. You might be wondering why I'm mentioning Bilderberg Club. Uh, in, in a cryptocurrency vlog. Well, you better believe that they're talking about crypto. It's probably not center stage right now, but still, it's an important means to an end. And what is the end there? I mean, I've just said so much about it that I think there's no doubt what the end is. <laughs> okay, going back to the cryptoverse. Uh, Bitcoin has dropped 6.7%, settling at 67-ish uh, at the time of recording, which is Monday morning, after nearly reaching 72,000 high despite 1.96 billion dollars in net inflows into the u.s spot bitcoin etfs since may 15th uh the decline puzzles investors especially with the u.s spot bitcoin etf market now managing over 50 billion dollars in assets dollars in assets so 
allow me to try to explain what's happening. I mean, se several factors contribute to Bitcoin stagnation, but uh, the first one that I'm going to mention, I think it's the one that really, uh, that, that's really it. I mean, the movement of 141,686 Bitcoins from the failed Mt. Gox exchange, I mean, that's a signal of imminent distribution to creditors. Over $9.4 billion worth of Bitcoin is owed to 127,000 creditors. So people rush to sell before the market's flooded. That's basically it. Uh, but then there are other reasons, official reasons for that matter. I mean, the U.S. regulatory environment adds uncertainty. The SEC and Commodity Futures Trading Commission have taken actions against major exchanges, including Binance and Coinbase, but that's in the past. I mean, they keep bringing this up. I don't know why. Uh, and of course, political backlash is evident with uh, U.S. senators linking cryptocurrencies to illicit activities like the fentanyl trade, for example. This political pressure apparently exacerbates negative sentiment, but I honestly don't see what that's got to do with the Bitcoin price movement. I think it's very, very much secondary. Anyway, according to data from Into the Block, uh, stablecoins saw over $846 billion in on-chain trading volume in May, uh, despite a 30% drop in monthly trading volume and the total stablecoin supply being $20 billion below its peak. The market remains highly active. Uh, Into the Block's on-chain insights, it's an awesome newsletter, uh, newsletter I highly recommend everybody subscribes, highlights stablecoins potential to reduce hefty international remittance fees. Uh, a Coinbase study noted that Americans pay nearly $12 billion annually to send money abroad. Uh, PayPal's uh, PiUSD emerged as a significant player with its market cap nearing $400 million, making it the 10th largest and one of the fastest growing stablecoins. PiUSD saw a 21% increase in April and is now um, integrated with the Solana blockchain, uh, previously limited to Ethereum. Uh, I mean, the, the coin was previously limited to Ethereum, obviously. Uh, the Solana ecosystem boasts over $3 billion in stablecoin market cap, with USDC dominating 72% of the market share. Uh, the integration follows PayPal's announcement in April that Zoom, its money transfer service, will allow US customers to send stablecoins to about 160 countries fee-free. No fees. Wow. Uh, in April, uh, the on-chain trading volume of stablecoins surpassed $1.3 trillion. That's more than Visa's average monthly volume last year. We've covered that. This is not really that that easy, but uh, we're not going to get into that right now. Uh, USDT led with uh, $654 billion in transactions over the last 30 days, followed by MakerDAO's DAI with $394 billion and USDC with $321 billion. Tether Holdings has acquired a $100 million stake in BitDeer Technologies Group, a US-listed Bitcoin miner owned by Chinese billionaire Jihan Wu. Uh, Tether also uh, has the option to purchase an additional $50 million in shares within a year. Uh, this deal will fund BitDeer's data center expansion, development of ASIC-based crypto mining equipment, and other corporate purposes. The exact percentage of BitDeer now owned by Tether was not disclosed, and Tether hasn't commented on the deal. Uh, I suspect, <laughs> anywhere, I, I have so many suspicions here. Uh, this marks a significant step for Tether in its plan to become a major Bitcoin miner following its construction of mining, fa uh, mining facilities in Uruguay, Paraguay, and El Salvador last year. Uh, Tether had announced plans to spend half a billion dollars on these efforts within six months. Wow, There's just so much to unpack. Let me know if you want me to shoot a video on this. This is a fascinating topic. Tether is basically getting ready to mint Bitcoin, sell Bitcoin, and sell it for USDT. So it's it's an unimaginable onslaught, but uh, we'll just not we're not going to get into that right now. Uh, Coinbase is pushing for the SEC to start writing specific rules for crypto, arguing in an appeals court that the current situation creates a catch-22 for crypto firms. Coinbase claims that the SEC demands compliance while prosecuting firms for non-compliance, yet refuses to establish clear guidance. Well, you know, the guidance they want. They want to do whatever the hell they want. So anyway, Coinbase accuses the SEC of trying to destroy the crypto industry by setting impossible standards and prosecuting companies that can't comply. While the SEC maintains its its stance on digital assets hasn't changed, Coinbase argues that the SEC's evidence is based on abstract statements. Uh, the SEC rebutted Coinbase's call for rulemaking uh, stating that existing regulations are workable and that Coinbase cannot force it to create new rules. <laughs> uh, crypto losses from fraud and hacks declined by 12% year over year, according to a May 30th report from blockchain security firm uh, Immunify. A total of $52 million was lost over the course of the month, down from over $59 million in the same month last year. In addition, the figure represents a 28% decline compared to the amount lost in April. Uh, the report illustrates a continuing trend 
of declining losses from hacks and fraud in the Web3 industry. Now, in March, Immunify released a report stating that losses in Q1 in, in the first quarter of 2024 declined by 23% over the previous year. In April, Certicay imported that the, uh, reported that the month uh, had seen its lowest losses ever. Hallelujah. <laughs> And sort of like to follow up this ju jubilation about the, the, the hacks being on the decline. Uh, Japanese cryptocurrency exchange DMM Bitcoin just reported a huge security breach. Over 4,500 Bitcoins worth more than $300 million are stolen due, due to an unauthorized access to its wallet. Uh, to prevent any further breaches, DMM Bitcoin has suspended new account openings, halted cryptocurrency withdrawals, and stopped new buying orders for spot trading. Uh, existing limit orders and yen withdrawals might face some delays. Well, I bet you that they've already fixed that. But um, well, saying it, yeah, the good news is DMM Bitcoin has promised to fully guarantee all customer Bitcoin deposits. They'll be covering the stolen amount with support from their group companies. The exchange has apologized for the inconvenience and is actively investigating the breach. Uh, Spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds in the US logged their 13th consecutive day of net inflows uh, on Thursday, totaling $48.71 million, leading the pack Fidelity's FBTC saw 119 million in net inflows. On the flip side, ARK's, uh, Kathy Wood, remember Kathy Wood? ARK's ARKB experienced nearly $100 million in net outflows, making its largest outflow since uh, debuting in January. BlackRock's IBIT recorded $2 million in net inflows, while Bitwise's BITB added $26 million. Meanwhile, Invesco and Galaxy Digital's Bitcoin ETF recorded $2 million in inflows. And Grayscale's GBTC saw zero flows. I mean, zero in and out. That thing is dead in the water. <laughs> and finally, pop star, a newly minted crypto star, Iggy Azalea, uh, announced uh, she will burn her own coins whenever a celebrity coin is identified as a scam rug. Her strategy is to build trust and integrity in the crypto community and set herself apart from other controversial celebrities. Quote, I just think it'd be fire to one to be something positive. Uh, to be fire, I guess it's a... It's a <laughs> kids say it these days it's slang or something to be fire. <laughs> uh, despite these efforts to bring legitimacy to her meme coin dubbed Mother Iggy or Mother, <laughs> Bubble Maps recently claimed that insiders blocked 20% of the supply at launch before Azalea announced the launch of Mother. Uh, the holdings were then dumped for two million dollars before the announcement. What are you gonna do? I mean, what are you gonna do? This is this is the game we play. So I've said it before. I'll say it again. Learn to play the game, and that's how you make money in this in this racket. I mean, you buy low, you sell high. Anyway, I'm not gonna bore you any longer. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments if you want me to put together some videos on the burning topics that we've just covered. Uh, again, thanks for watching. Uh, join our Telegram community, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.